So you just hit level 80 and you've got no idea what to do next. Well, you can finally play the game, of course. Now in this video, I'm gonna give you some game changing tips for what to do when you hit level 80 and even a little bit before level 80, just in case when you're watching this video, maybe you're not level 80 yet, or if you have an alt character you're leveling, you can make some really, really smart plays as you approach max level. Now, one of the big changes that came with Wrath Classic was that certain quests will now give emblems of heroism, which you could only get from bosses in heroics back in the day. Now, this change gives you incentive to seek out those quests, which give you those emblems, so that right when you hit level 80, you can buy a bunch of pre-raid best in slot gear. The quests that reward these emblems, however, have to do with zone phasing, when the zone is changing because of the quests that you're doing. I'm sure you've seen this before. These usually take place near the end of a long quest chain, or you know, you have to complete almost all of the quests in the zone. For example, by completing Zoldrak, you'll be left with 10 emblems of heroism. And by completing Ice Crown and Storm Peaks in their entirety, you'll get another 80. So that's almost 100 emblems of heroism that you can start out by the time you hit level 80, which makes you raid ready much faster than if you didn't do those quests. Speaking of raid, this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends has taken over and gaming will never be the same again. Raid is the first game to bring a true console level experience to your phone. With hundreds of artifacts to equip and over 600 champions blessed with unique skills, you can build your team, develop your champions, and raid your way. As a high level collection RPG, Raid started with hundreds of unique characters and bosses, but that didn't stop them from adding more and more new champions. And if adding new characters wasn't enough, last year Raid added a whole new faction. The Shadowkin are a tribe of warriors from the Far East recently liberated from the Reign of Evil, and of course, the Hydra Clan boss. It's without a doubt the biggest, baddest, and scariest boss to ever set foot in Teleri. Honestly, I can keep going on and on about Raid Shadow Legends. It's really the perfect game for all player types. And this month, Raid's just released a giant new feature, Awakening, and a brutal new dungeon, the Iron Twins Fortress. But wait, here's the big news. Raid has just released a super-powered, legendary version of everybody's favorite champion, Death Knight. Ultimate Death Knight is everything we hoped for. He's poised, he's powerful, he's perfect. And the best part is everyone can get him for free just by logging in. All you have to do is log in and play Raid for seven days between now and October 27th, and you'll add Ultimate Death Knight to your collection. There's seriously never been a better time to get started, but there's more. You can also use the DK Rises promo code for a bunch of free items to instantly level your new strongest champion all the way to level 50, five star ascension. The promo code is available for both new and existing players. And if you haven't started playing Raid yet, click my link in the description or scan my QR code here on the screen, you'll get unique bonuses worth $30. We're talking a free epic champion, Aina, 200,000 silver, one energy refill, one XP boost, and one ancient shard, so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in game. All this treasure will be waiting for you here. All right, back to what to do when you hit level 80. So you're gonna have some emblems from doing those quests, but you won't be able to get every single pre-raid best in slot item that requires emblems, because 80 is usually not gonna be enough. Maybe for your class it is, but you're probably gonna wanna go run heroics anyways, because heroics drop some really good gear that's going to help you get those pre-raid best in slot items. Uh, for example, Heroic Nexus drops really great spell power, mace, and so on. There's going to be tons of really good pre-raid best in slot that you can get from Heroics, and you're also going to get those emblems. Now, another really big important thing about running these Heroics is that you need to be wearing a tabard, because these tabards are going to give you reputation with whatever faction tabard you're wearing. So, for example, if you're wearing the Wormrest Accord tabard while you're doing a Heroic Dungeon, you're going to get Wormrest Accord reputation. So it's a really good idea to always be wearing a tabard, always be getting that reputation. Now, the reason you want to be, you know, building up that reputation is because a lot of good gear is unlocked through reputation. This is another reason why humans are just really, really good in Wrath of the Lich King. They've got diplomacy, which gives an increased 10% reputation gains from all sources. In addition to that, every man for himself. So humans are just fantastic. PvP, PvE, everything. Humans are great. Now, there are five main factions you'll need to focus on for pre-raid best in slot gearing. The Argent Crusade, the Kirin Tor, the Knights of the Evan Blade, and the Sons of Hodir and the Wormrest Accord. Now, each of these factions have epic 200 item level gear that you can purchase once you are exalted. You'll want to grind each reputation, but the faction you should focus on first will depend on the role you play, whether that's a tank, DPS, or healer. 
If you're the physical damage dealing class, the Knights of the Ebon Blade should be your top priority faction since they sell the best in slot helm enchant called Arcanum of Torment. If you are a spellcaster, on the other hand, the Kirin Tor sells the best in slot helm enchant for spellcasters called Arcanum of Burning Mysteries, so they should start there. For healers, the Wormrest Accord is top priority because they sell their best in slot feet slot item called Sandals of Crimson Fury, purchasable once exalted, as well as Gavel of the Brooding Storm, a good one handed mace. And if you're a tank, the top priority is the Argent Crusade because they sell your best in slot helm enchant called Arcanum of the Stalwart Protector once you're revered, and also special issue leg plates, which are actually a good pre raid best in slot option you can buy from them too. Now, if you're keeping track, there's still the fifth reputation that we haven't talked about yet, which is the Sons of Hodir. The best in slot shoulder enchant is unlocked from this faction. It's great for spellcasters, physical damage dealing classes, as well as healers. Now, they do offer a great tank enchant as well that you can purchase from the Sons of Hodir, but there is a better one that you can get from Honor, so it's actually better to just get that Honor one and save yourself the trouble of grinding all of that reputation from the Sons of Hodir. Now, in order to unlock access to the Sons of Hodir Quartermaster, you're going to need to get complete a quest chain, which starts from Gretchen Fizzlespark, an NPC in the town of K3, which is located in Storm Peaks. The first quest is called They Took Our Men. Continue that quest chain until you can talk to the Sons of Hodir Quartermaster, and then from there, you're going to do dailies every day. But the fastest way to power your Sons of Hodir reputation is actually to farm heroics, which you'll be doing anyways for gear. Now each boss is going to be dropping those emblems of heroism, and they can be exchanged for a Sons of Hodir commendation badge. Now this is probably coming out in a later phase, so if you're watching this in phase one, then you're probably not going to be able to do it this way. You're going to have to find an alternate method. All right, but if you went inscription, you do not need to farm Sons of Hodir reputation because your inscription only shoulder enchant is actually better than anything that the Sons of Hodir can offer you. So if you don't like reputation grinds, definitely consider inscriptions so that you can get your best in slot shoulder enchant without having to grind reputation. Now, speaking of grinding reputation, again, we're talking about the tabards, right? Each of those five different factions that I listed earlier, earlier each has a tabard you should definitely pick up. The Kirin Tor Tabard can be purchased from the Quartermaster located in Dalaran. The Wormrest Accord Tabard can be purchased on top of Wormrest Temple. The Argent Crusade Tabard can be purchased inside the Argent Vanguard. This is a small camp located just north northwest of Dalaran in Ice Crown. And the Knights of the Ebon, Ebon Blade Tabard, you need to do a quest chain, which will then phase in the Knights of the Ebon Blade base located at the Shadow Vault. You probably already did this if we you know, did all the phasing quests. Um, once you uh, do that quest chain um, located at the Shadow Vault, uh, you can then talk to the Quartermaster. This quest chain starts with a quest. It's all fun and games, which you can get from Coltira Deathweaver if you're a Horde or Thessarian if you're Alliance, and they are found above their respective Horde or Alliance airships flying around Ice Crown. Now remember, in order to purchase any of these these tabards you'll need to be friendly with a faction first so you might have to do a couple extra quests to get to friendly but really it shouldn't be that hard and then from there just spam those heroics get that reputation up and if you're enjoying this video so far don't forget to like and subscribe all right so we've talked about doing heroics we've talked about doing reputation what else well another big obvious one is to level your professions in wrath of the lich king professions are huge engineering bonuses are just completely overpowered jewel crafting stat bonuses are great blacksmithing stat bonuses are fantastic in the form of adding extra sockets to your gear professions are amazing whether that's for gold or for min maxing your character definitely level your professions now you know the game kind of just came out a week or two ago so you know everything's really expensive and the price is going to slowly go down as supply uh sort of exceeds demand right and so I'd recommend if you have gathering professions, I would just list your stuff and not even use your own materials if you want to just capitalize on making some gold rather than leveling your profession super fast. However, if you're made out of gold and you have the gold and you just want to level your professions, it's a really great idea to do it now. But, you know, it's up to you. Uh, take advantage of timing, uh, do the smart thing. But leveling your professions, whether it's gathering or, you know, engineering or blacksmithing or mining, whatever it is, 
make sure to take advantage of it and uh, try to use uh, your professions to your benefit now that you're max level. All right, so other than leveling your professions, there's actually one other thing that is super important to do at level 80, and that is do your daily quests, right? Sons of Hodir daily quests. If you want to build up reputation with them you can't do it through dungeons so uh in phase one at least until those commendation badges come out so you got to do those daily so make sure every day log on do your daily quests even more important arguably than sons of hodir is profession daily quests you can't forget that the only way to get your jewel crafting recipes unlocked is from those jewel craft those dollar on jewel crafter tokens which primarily come from doing daily quests unless you are also prospecting down titanium or getting that titanium dust turning that in as well but again you know it's pretty much easier to do the dailies unless you have a lot of gold and you can purchase the titanium so do your daily quests the same thing as for cooking you know a lot of things are locked behind cooking daily quests you get those little cooking badges and learn new recipes daily quests are huge don't forget your fishing daily quests your cooking daily quests your jewel crafting and so on do your dailies it will be a great idea all right, moving on to point number five, we have farm gold. You're going to be wanting to farm gold because throughout Wrath of the Lich King, you're going to be buying consumables for PvE. You're going to be buying enchants if you're in PvP and PvE gems you know the gold is just needed for so many different things and you're going to want to have a stockpile available you don't want to run into a situation where you run out of gold you also just want to have gold available you know for repairs if you want to buy new mounts uh you just need to have gold and so I have a ton of gold videos on my channel. You can find other ones all over YouTube. So just find one, pick one, and start farming gold once you're level 80. It's a perfect time to do it. You're at a, a good power level. You can go to any zone, do quests at level 80. There's so much you can do. So tip number five is farm some gold once you hit level 80. You'll definitely want to do that so you have a good stockpile ready to do some end game stuff. All right, moving on to tip number six, we have grind honor. Now that you're max level, you're as powerful as you're going to get. There's no level 81. You can go ahead and start grinding some honor do the weekend battleground do some pre-mades you know find find a great honor farm for you whether that's you know spamming alteric valley uh doing um you know different battlegrounds but get that honor farm going uh winter grasp is actually really great honor so definitely check that one out as well all right moving on to number seven our final tip and that is play 10 arena games the arena season has already started this week it's going to be going on every single week Play at least 10 games so that you can get some arena points at least so that every single week you are getting those resources. You don't want to miss a week. You don't want to miss out on this first week. So hopefully you're at level 80 this week. If you're not, hopefully you maybe can get it before uh, the arena points are distributed. But play at least 10 games. Try to get those arena points so that you don't miss out on that every single week. And those are my seven tips. And if you like this video, you might like this video right above my head. I'll see you there.